Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today I'm doing a book haul. So I don't often do book hauls because I don't tend to buy that many books um, that often because I really love my local library. But I've been getting out of the house more as the weather gets warmer and yesterday I biked um, down the coast to a little area called Hampton which has four ob shops which are opportunity shops in Australia but in America we call them thrift stores and one used bookstore. I ended up getting books from three different places and no book was more than seven dollars I believe so it was really awesome. Um, I prefer to buy used books unless I've already read a book and really loved it um, in which case I will buy it new but I just really like op shops because you never know what you're going to find and I had some great finds. And also the first op shop that I went in, which they call um, Salvos here, which is <laughs> the Salvation Army, um, their reading section or their book section was like a store. It was so amazing, curated, like it had reading chairs and it had a TV with fake fire crackling. Like I'll put images here because I was just so amazed that I immediately wrote about it to my husband. Um, and I took my sweet, sweet time going through all of the shelves and there were so many books I could have picked but I only had a backpack on me. So, so without further ado, I'm going to talk about the five books that I picked up from Salvo's Hampton. I picked up The Diving Bell and The Butterfly by Jean-Dominique Bobby, and I've heard, this has been on my TBR for a long, long time. It's written by the ex-editor-in-chief of French L, who I believe had a massive stroke and then the only part of his body that he could move was an eyelid. And this entire novel is written um, with the movements of his eyelid painstakingly over time, and I've heard that this is really great. It's a bestseller. And also, I believe, like a French classic, so I'm really looking forward to this one. Then we also have Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. Um, I've been looking to get Sharp Objects for a while. With really popular books that I suspect I might find in op shops, I, I tend to not buy them, even though I really, really want to read them. Um, I wait and see if I can find them in op shops. And so I picked up um, uh, Dark Places at an op shop, read it, loved it, and then now I really wanted to find sharp objects and it just so happened to be at the first place that I went yesterday. Um, so this one is what the TV show Sharp Objects was based off of, which is this cover. Um, and we're following the main character who goes home um, as a journalist investigating the murder um, of a young girl in her hometown. Um, I can't wait to read this, I think it's going to be creepy and dark and I'm really excited. Um, okay, and then one that I had never heard of before but sounded really good um, is Census by Jesse Ball. Um, now, this one is about a man with a son who has Down syndrome and he is hired to be the census taker for his area. So him and his son set off across an unnamed country going into unnamed towns which are just themed like A, B, C, D, and so on. Um, and they're trying to put together not only information for the census, but also find out what is this weird thing that is impacting all of the different towns that they're visiting, and also what's going on with the government. So, sounds very intriguing, um, and I can't wait to get to it. Okay, and then next are two, which I was really shocked to see there. Um, so this is My Sister, the Serial Killer. Um, which I have been wanting to read for a long time and I never expected to see this in an ob shop. This was four dollars. <laughs> I can't imagine. I can't believe it, frankly. Um, and I'm sure that you guys know this is about a sister whose sister is a serial killer of the lovers that she used to have and she helps her sister like cover up the murders. Um, it's small, the, the cover's stunning, it's an author I've never read before, and the subject matter I find quite intriguing. So I can't believe this was at the op shop. I'm really, really so happy about it. Um, and then the last one, which was also $4, is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. I have heard mixed things about this book. Two booktubers um, who I really love did not enjoy this book. Everyone else seems to really highly love this book, and it was also recommended to me numerous times by people in my life, <laughs> so 
I feel like I'm just so intrigued now that I do have to read it. Um, so I was thinking that if I did find it, then I would give it a go. Um, and it was there, it was $4, and I really hemmed and hawed about it because it's quite chunky. So it took up like a huge por part of my backpack. Um, but yeah, so I'm really hoping that it will be worth it. Um, if you don't know, this is following the life of, I believe, Jude is the main character's name. And we follow them from childhood to adulthood um, through various cities and through various uh, friends and settings and like different uh, locations, society, like lots of different things. And um, yeah, I'm hoping that I'm one of the people who likes it. Otherwise, I'll be a bit sad because it's so chunky. So yeah. So that is the first bookshop, Salvos in Hampton. And the other thing that I loved about that, other than the obvious, like, just beauty of the whole section, was that they had a section new to the shop, so that, like, when you went there, you didn't have to look back through all the shelves that you've looked at before. You can go and just look in that section if you've been there recently, which I think is brilliant. I don't know any other store that has ever done that. That's like an ob shop. So every time I go to an ob shop, I have to look through all of the shelves all again. Um, so I just thought that was brilliant and I loved it and I also like was raving about their book section to the cashier She was like, okay crazy book lady. So then another of the places I went was Red Cross um, And while I was in the Red Cross, I picked up Beowulf, um, the Seamus Haney translation Now I've read Beowulf multiple times for school and really really loved it um, The reason I picked this up was because it was a dollar and also I've been meaning um, to get my husband to read it because um, he's become very interested in it after we read The Mere Wife, which is based on Beowulf, and we both mutually loved it. So I'm hoping that my husband will pick it up and we can talk about it soon, or maybe we will read it as like a bedtime book, um, perhaps. Okay, and the last place that I picked up books yesterday was a place called, I think it's called Bound Words. It's a used bookstore also in Hampton, and I picked up three books. So the first one that I got is October Country, The October Country by Ray Bradbury. So if you don't know, I'm a huge Ray Bradbury fan. Um, I love, I love, love, love his works. I've read The Illustrated Man, I've read The Martian Chronicles, I've read Fahrenheit 451, obviously. Um, but this one I haven't seen before. They also had other ones there, but I was like, okay, slow down. You don't have to buy them all today. So I bought the one that is the most, I think, good for this time of year. So this one is all about creepy Halloween-y stuff. So I am definitely going to put this on my Halloween TBR. It says, The little doctor with his odd love of bones, the peeled dead eyes of the thing in the jar, the graveyard earth on a dog's muzzle, a synth, a scythe with a singing crimson wet blade. All this and more awaits you in this hauntingly brilliant book by the greatest fantasy writer of our time. So it sounds perfect for Halloween, and I honestly cannot wait. Um, I always love finding the older Bradbury covers because I don't know when, but there's a period where they redid all of the covers, and I'm less into them. I like the originals that are very, like, you know, they look like this. They look kind of crazy, not too highly done, um, and I really, really love this. Um, I just, I love Bradbury, and I'm really excited. And then I also got, this is Milk Teeth by Ray White. Um, so I've never heard of this before, but I found this in the poetry section. And the author is non-binary and lives in Brisbane. So these books are talking about body, sexuality, and personal identity, and um, the delineations between, you know, halves, I think, is what it goes on about. I read the first poem, and I really love the style, so I'm gonna give it a go. I'm not I don't have like the best luck with poetry, but I do try when something sounds really interesting. So um, yeah, I can't wait to pick this up and it will be great for like a challenge or something where I need to read um, a really small piece of work. Okay, and the last book is one that I am absolutely like so happy, excited, crazy hyped that it was there because um, I have a TBR that I've been putting together for September and I've been hunting around to see if I could find different books for it. And this one I just couldn't get, even though I really wanted it. And then it was in this used bookstore. And it is Our Life in the Forest by Marie Darrow. Wow, I cannot say that. Yes. But this is a creepy, like, 
sci-fi dystopian world, I'm just going to read you the blurb. So it's, in the near future, a woman is writing in the depths of a forest. She's cold. She's lost the use of one eye. She's down to one kidney, one lung. Before, in the city, she treated patients who had suffered trauma. And she would travel out to the rest center to visit Marie, her half, her spitting image who lay in an induced coma, her body parts available whenever the woman needed them. The woman fled along with other fugitives and their halves. But in the forest, the reanimated halves start to behave strangely. Oh, so this reminds me of, do any of you guys remember that really old sci-fi movie called The Island, I think it is, where it's about keeping second, keeping clones to basically harvest their body parts um, so that you never die, I think is what it is. And this sounds super creepy and I'm really excited about it. Um, I've wanted to read it ever since I saw it. And honestly, this book was the most expensive book I bought yesterday. It was $8 and also the writing is huge. So it's actually not that big of a book, but $8. I don't know when I'll ever like get the chance to find this again in real life. Because <laughs> um, like I don't think I mentioned it's a French author and it's translated. I don't know why it was in that bookstore, but thank you to whoever donated it or however they procured it. I am really excited. So that is my recent haul yesterday from the Ob Shops. Um, I think in total I spent maybe just under $40 for nine books. So that is really amazing. I'm super hyped about it and I can't wait to read some of them. So um, thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. Um, if you have any thoughts or comments about any of the books that I mentioned, please do let me know down below. I know some of them are pretty controversial. Um, basically, this one I've heard mixed things about, My Sister the Serial Killer, and I've also heard really mixed things about um, A Little Life. So. Um, if you have any opinions on them or any of the others, do let me know down below. If not, I hope you are having an amazing day. I'm off to the library now to do some work and upload another video, and I will chat to you guys later. Bye!